All right, preparing. Hope you're preparing too, because YouTube and Zoom are preparing. Okay. <laughs> There we are, there we are. Okay. All right, we're live <clears throat> on YouTube. Awesome. <laughs> there we are. Okay, yes, everything's launched, perfect. So, Andre, great. hi, hi, hi. Hello, Antoine, it's great to be here. I've been looking forward, actually. Uh, finally, we are here. <laughs> me too, me too. We had yeah. a great panel discussion. Uh, that was six months ago in February with Juan, so. Heather. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That, that's then, a great panel. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And so very for, relevant say, also, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it was really relevant. I mean, the, what we were discussing for many teachers and entrepreneurs, it was great to be part of that team. Yeah. It was, yes. Yeah, very interesting to talk about. Yes. This overflow of free webinars, things like yes. that. And yeah. what actually constitutes uh, valuable, practical CPD for us teachers. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope, I dare say yeah. today is going to be one of those as well. Because <laughs> you're so, working yeah. hard. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I've been working really hard, especially after I started teaching. I'm teaching uh, some postgraduate courses in Brazil. So I teach uh, subjects related to language, bilingualism, cognition, neuroscience, psychology, you know, and it's been really hard. Lots of things to do. Uh, I, I just can't help it. I can't help it. You know, they say, hey, do you want to do this? Uh, well, I, I will find some time to do it. <laughs> I think I think we, we, we kind of embody a lot of teachers uh, embody this idea of uh, hey, if you really want to enjoy your life, like make your yeah. hobby your job. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think people can tell that we love teaching and training. And so, you know, it's never too much, I think. But it, it should be at some point, right? We have to get some. Breath. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have some free time to do stuff that we like as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Don't yeah. let don't don't let it kill you. But I, I don't think I don't think you're you're yeah. you're on that road. I mean, I, I really like what you've put together. That idea of learning cosmos. Oh yes, and uh, well, since you mentioned it, I do have the magazine here, Learning Ooh, Cosmos. Nice. And it looks really beautiful. I was really proud when I got this in my mailbox. And um, yeah, so the idea is really to, to put together some uh, principles and theories about learning from different levels, you know, levels of analysis. So uh, we have the cognitive level that deals with attention, memory, language use, reasoning, and things like that. But we also have the, the emotional level. So emotional intelligence, uh, regulation of, of your emotions, how emotions are built in the brain, right? And I felt like, well, it, as teachers, all of those things are incredibly useful when you're planning your lesson, delivering your lesson, reflecting on your delivery, right? And normally they're not put together. They are actually in different books and different articles. And so my idea was really, how can I bring all of those things together in a way that it's not too complicated, but it's not oversimplifying it, right? And I thought of the cosmos, right? I'm a huge geek. I love the universe and space and stuff like that. And I said, mm, maybe there's something here. And I was reading uh, Stephen Hawking's book at the time, A Brief History of Time. And I said, oh, that's it. Because this guy, he's amazing with analogies, right? Mm -hmm. Like how he explains the universe. And I said, so maybe that's what I can do. I can have an analogy of the universe, of the cosmos, and then put all of those theories there, you know? in different concentric circles so that teachers can focus or zoom in or out depending on what they want to learn more about, right? Nice. And then it happened, yeah. So it's it's published. <laughs> People can check it out if they want to, yeah. It's funny that you referenced Stephen Hawking because at first, yep. actually, my first thought when, when, when I read uh, just the title, like the yep. idea of learning cosmos and a voyage yep. into, my first yep. thought was for Carl Sagan. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Carl Sagan was, was definitely another source of inspiration. I was watching uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's new uh, Cosmos, the remake uh, by yes, National yeah. Geographic, right? I love but I was, I've, I've always been a huge fan of Carl Sagan's original Cosmos, right? I mean, he was also a master of analogies and, and helping us understand the universe with very simple uh, ideas, right? 
and yeah, he was definitely he's he's all over you know the learning cosmos conceptual framework. There is a quote by by Carl Sagan uh, too. Actually, we are made of star stuff, right? Yes. So he says that, and maybe that's why we are so interested and fascinated by the cosmos because we are part of it, right? It's part of us. Yeah, Our absolutely. Atoms, molecules they came from stars, right? So this is really uh, amazing. Yeah. I actually like, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan as well. I really love his work. Uh, yeah. Not just like, there's, there's the deep work that he's done to, 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 to help all the, the, the NASA missions, uh, et cetera, but yeah. also the intense work he put into spreading knowledge. Yes. And that I really love. And so one yeah. of the, you know, I really like working uh, not just on pronunciation, but also on intonation. And, oh, yes, um, definitely. For, yeah. for one of those, I, I use his uh, pale blue dot speech. And, oh, uh, that's such a beautiful get different one. Yeah. emotions. And so they, yeah. they, they read it out loud using different emotions at different times of the speech. They have loads of fun yeah. with that. And Very uh, good choice, you know. I mean, he was an incredible speech. speaker, right? And very, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I, it's really hard not to pay attention. <laughs> He's really... You know, he knows what he's talking about. He's passionate about uh, his subject. And, and he, it should, I don't know, the, the, the words he uses, right? That everything kind of makes sense. So he's a great speaker and definitely yeah. something we should use more in our classes, right? Well, going from Carl Sagan, I actually thought of, uh, so the learning cosmos, that brought me yeah. to Carl Sagan. And I yep. thought, hmm, then... If Andre is as much of a geek as I am on that kind of thing, he probably as well knows Star Trek and the Enterprise. And I was wondering if, <laughs> yes. if we put Andre on the uh, Starship Enterprise from Star Trek, yeah. what would his role be? Uh, <laughs> I was wondering, would you be more of a Spock of uh, Deanna uh, Troy? I, you know, if you, uh, I am a geek. I love Star Trek. I love Star Wars. Anything related to space, really. I don't know if I would be a Spock because, you know, Spock has something that I don't enjoy that much actually, which is the idea that you can separate rationality from emotions, you know, <laughs> think about that, right? And this is not really true uh, from a neuroscientific perspective. We can't really separate cognition and emotion, but I like that he's very rational and logical mm -hmm. and, he and he applies, you know, this approach to understanding the world. And I, I feel like, in that regard, I would be very much like uh, uh, Spock, but I would also think of myself as, as Kirk, for example, or Kirk. somebody who, yeah, because, you know, I think of exploration, of really being, uh, you know, leading, let's say, uh, uh, this, this incredible voyage, this, you know, this idea of actually bringing people to follow me uh, through this voyage, exploring different galaxies and planets. And um, so I think, I think I would be a commander <laughs> or, you know, or maybe, I don't know. So I think it, I, I have a little bit of, of many different characters there, you know, Picard. I love Picard because I love, you I was know, right? say, Kirk, <laughs> uh, I, I would not pick but Kirk. Maybe not I'm Kirk. Picard. I think Picard. Yeah. Yeah. I think Picard would be better especially because I love Patrick Stewart, you know, he's a, a wonderful actor. And I think I could be Picard, yes. <laughs> I, I shared a few of his sonnets reading, you know, during the pandemic, he did something that was absolutely yes. wonderful. Every day he read a sonnet. Uh, that was absolutely wonderful. Yes, I think I watched a couple, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, great actor, great voice, you know, and he's great just a, a nice guy, I think, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I would love to be friends with him, yeah. So uh, I was thinking, okay, interesting, because at first I did think of Spock, and I thought, well, that's the most obvious reference, but it doesn't fit because of this whole rationale, and he yeah. he struggles to understand the emotional level. Exactly. Then, because of the emotional level, I thought of Deanna Troy, you know, the counselor? Yes. But then I thought, well, no, it's not good enough, because she's all in the emotional, and, yep. and she doesn't really have a system. She, she exactly. Doesn't, she just feels Impulsive, not really in annoying. a way. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, well, you wouldn't be a data because you understand <laughs> no. the emotional, exactly. but maybe you would be da data's perfect companion to yeah. lead to the okay. android understanding emotions, yeah. uh, uh, all that aspect oh, of humanity. I like that. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. But because really what 
I, I see myself as somebody who wants to uh, bring different contributions, you know, from different fields and, and together so that it's easier for us to, to learn about them and to use them for, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. So yes, I think I would be a good companion in that regard. I think, uh, you know, I, I think I would be a good advisor. I think if you think of um, uh, maybe not a, a, a commander or a pilot or somebody who's, uh, you know, like kind of trying to convince people to follow, but really to, to advise, let's say. So I would make things available, you know, for people to, I would, I would give a counsel, let's say. I would actually help them decide which way to take. So I think that would be my role in a way. It's kind of like the scientist on board, but really looking at the cognitive, not just the cognitive scientists um, or cognitive brain sciences, you know, but really looking at the psychological aspect of things, not just the, the hard neuroscience, uh, you know, or natural sciences that we normally call them, but really looking at the, the social sciences as well, you know, the human sciences. I think I could do that. That would be my role. Yeah. Jean Picard is kind of fitting then, in a way, because yep. he, he's not I like a, so. a commander that, that dictates, uh, uh, yep. but he, he accompanies each, each, one, each one's role and helps them develop uh, throughout that's the it. series. So yeah, I that's why, you know, I, 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 I stuck with Kirk for five seconds, then I, then I changed to Picard, because Picard makes more sense, most yeah. definitely, yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, maybe physically, you would you would be more. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, whenever. <clears throat> yeah. It's a compliment, but physically, yeah, sure. I would say you would be more. Uh, uh, Picard's number one. What's his name again? Uh, okay. Shame yes, I know me. who you were talking. Yeah. With the beard and everything. Like I know. Like, yes. Um, I look oh like gosh. him. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah. Shame okay. on me. It, it, Shame it, it, on it'll me. come back. Mm -hmm. It'll come back. Don't worry. This is how mem our memories work. You know? Yes. I was afraid you were going to say uh, Klingon or something. <laughs> 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 well, which, which. They're also, beautiful people too. <laughs> they are, you know. And I, I'm very interested in their language, you know. True. I tried to learn a couple of things, but I forgot all of it. And, and really, I, I'm very interested in how those uh, different universes, you know, uh, cinematic universes, and they create their own uh, linguistic bubbles, if you think mm -hmm. of, of, you know, like the Lord of the Rings did that, you know, uh, Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you have uh, Star Trek, you have Star Wars. They have their own languages. They actually create languages for that universe, which is fascinating, I think. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. All right. But I would not be a Klingon, you know? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Fighter. <laughs> yeah. And all about honor. Exactly. I'm much more like live long and prosper. That's my, my motto, I think. <laughs> Even though I do want uh, the emotional aspects to be integrated. But yeah. I think you would do great work with data, but yes, again, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think here uh, uh, is us geeks talking, and it, <laughs> yeah. it does make the learning cosmos sound very theoretical, which is, it's not just that. Uh, it's no. always very important to have practical takeaways, to really accompany yes. teachers, and I think if something is too theoretical, it's a bit difficult to digest. Definitely. And because of the reality of teachers, I mean, we teach every day. We have so many constraints coming from curriculums, from uh, schools, governments, parents as well. Uh, if we're freelancers or, or private school teachers, clients, and uh, we don't always Definitely. have time. It's good to have these little practical takeaways that we can start implementing little by little, discovering these new yep. theories and gradually step by step. Uh, discovering Definitely. it. So that's the goal as well today. We're going to share some activities. Uh, Wonderful. A little bit more yes. practical with that. Yes, great. This is really, I love talking about practical stuff that, that teachers can, you know, right away, right after this, this webinar, they can just, hey, I'm going to use that in my next lesson. And then, and, and then, you know, 
reflect, did it work? Can I do it in a different way? Uh, what else can I do that is kind of similar? So I love it. I think that makes a, a lot of difference, especially because teachers go to a lot of sessions that are incredibly theoretical mm-hmm. and abstract. They don't exactly know what to do with that. I mean, they feel like, wow, this is great. So what? <laughs> so what can I do now, right? So we need to do more practical sessions of you know, how to, to use strategies that you, know, you can implement very easily, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So I believe, Andre, you told me to get my phone ready. Uh, yeah, so can I, can I get started then? Yeah. Please, please. <laughs> okay, so I actually wanted to share my screen here to show you where I got the inspiration for, for mm-hmm. this, okay? And uh, this is something that I have on my blog. And then, uh, and it's also an invitation for anyone who wants to check out my blog, edcrocks.com. I think I have a lot of great lesson plans and reflections there, right? (laughs) And this one is really about something that we haven't been able to do in a while, which is traveling. And I think everybody misses traveling, right? And uh, (laughs) so I used a book. So we we had an ELT material Uh that we used a couple of years ago when I was um, uh, working at a language center here in the same city I am right now. And I remember that there was a lesson about traveling and cities, really. And then I remembered that a couple of years before, I had uh, watched a video about this crazy guy, and his name is Matt Harding. And I don't know if anybody knows this guy, but he has a website, and the website is uh, Where the Hack is Matt. Yes. (laughs) So have you ever heard of him, Antoine? Maybe? (laughs) Yes, 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 I have, I remember. Okay, all right. So I don't know if you remember what he does, but he basically travels all over the world to different cities and he posts something on social media to get people to join him for a very silly dance that he invented, you know? So he goes, I don't know how to do it, but he moves his arms in in a very funny way and he jumps around, right? Something like that, yes. (laughs) And, uh, and actually, lots of people join this guy. And then he films himself, right? And then he edits. Uh, so he's been to hundreds of countries, right? Almost every country on the planet. And he has uh, footage in different cities. And I thought, this is great, you know? So I can use this to help my students think about match. Where the heck is match? But then, uh, you know, I think... Um, Destiny had something in, in store for me. And then, <laughs> so I want to show you a friend of mine that became quite popular after, I think, probably two or, or three months. And his name is Mr. Trunk. So there you go. So this is Mr. Trunk. And I know a lot of people might be thinking, well, what kind of grown man walks around with a stuffed elephant, right? And well, after you know about Mr. Trunk and the power of Mr. Trunk, I think you're going to change your mind. Because then we started thinking, how can we use Mr. Trunk in the classroom for my students to actually integrate Mr. Trunk somehow, you know, uh, into their family routines, for example, and then bring Mr. Trunk back to the classroom so that they can talk about the experiences they had with Mr. Trunk, right? And I'm not just talking about young learners, even adults did that and they had a lot of fun. And so Mr. Trunk is, six years old now, and he's been to 21 countries already with my students, with me, some colleagues, right? So I have, I think I have 247 pictures of Mr. Trunk on social media in different countries, and we have a hashtag, Mr. Trunk Travels. And something that I like to do with my students is, okay, so how about we try to describe where Mr. Trunk is, but we cannot use some keywords, you know, it has to, well, it can be too easy, right? But you have to select a picture of Mr. Trunk somewhere in some country uh, with a monument maybe, or, you know, some some place that people normally know, not just the conference. And you have to try to describe that to me so that I can try to guess. So this is basically how it works. And it's really authentic materials because Mr. Trunk has actually been to those countries, you know, And sometimes it's even being there with some of my students. So my students Mm -hmm. were the ones who took Mr. Trunk there. So are you ready, Antoine? Absolutely. 
So I think this works better if you go to Instagram, Instagram right. because it's easier to find the pictures. So now you're going to look for hashtag Mr. Trunk Travels. And you will find a lot of pictures. And so have your phone ready because you are, you're going to have to show me your phone after I guess the picture, okay? After, after. Well, yeah, if you, you can show me. It is quite possible that I will not be able to guess the picture where Mr. Trunk was. So maybe you can show me before as well. But I want you to select, uh, first select one picture, one photo with Mr. Trunk. And you have to describe the scenery, but you cannot give too much away. That's the rule, okay? So you cannot say it's, uh, you know, something that it's this place or you have to be very careful with your words, okay? So my, my goal is for you to guess, but not too quickly, basically. Yes, because I want you to speak more, okay? I want you to use your creativity, but not really give away very quickly, yeah. Well, let, let's start with an easy one. I mean, okay. M Mr. Trunk seems to be uh, uh, alone, but very happy because he is, okay. he is at one of the, the most famous sites uh, uh, of the okay. world. Um, All right. It's, it's, yeah. it's something that actually it's, it's difficult to believe because now it's, it's really a landmark of that city. Okay. But at the time, the local population were furious that oh okay that such a a monument was being erected erected so um, okay well is it is it a tower maybe mhm mm <laughs> okay is it the leaning tower of pisa no no okay all right oh the well because I, of course oh, you know other types of mon yeah, Sorry? I mean, keep, 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 keep talking. I mean, I was thinking because you use the word erected and we say erected for things that are built. Well, everything is built from the ground up, but for some reason I got stuck with a tower. So, and that's um, something that uh, students can do. The tower part. Uh, um, yep. Okay. Um, the, the locals at the time were really not happy with it because, uh, okay. um, because this city is, is, is famous for its architecture, for its, uh, um, it, okay. it is one, considered one of the most, well, the locals will tell you it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And right. uh, this tower in question was much too modern at the time. Oh, okay. Um, is it, I, I think this is a city in Europe because- Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, okay. So of course I know a lot of Mr. Trunk's adventure. So I think this one is probably Paris, right? Absolutely. And the Eiffel Tower, yes. yes. And I love the way, there you go. So I love the way you described it. You said landmark, you said monument that was erected and people were angry at the time, modern art and things like that, perfect. So you see, this is a great activity for you to explore your vocabulary range, right? because you have to avoid certain keywords, otherwise you give away too quickly, right? And I think, I think what's, what's, what's also interesting is that, um, of course, we're demonstrating it this way. I mean, yeah. we're not learning English. So of course, yeah. there, there's, there, there's certain vocabulary, things like that, that are more advanced, but Definitely. it doesn't matter, whatever the level, even A2 students will have fun uh, using their vocabulary without, so I'm guessing, one of the number one rules would be like yeah. no names. No names. Uh, so you cannot Power mention thing, continent, city, country, no names. Mm. But I've done this with A2 students. B1. It works really well for B1, B1, B2 students, you know, upper intermediate, lower intermediate as well. Because they already know how to use a lot of the vocabulary about cities, you know how to describe cities. So they know building, skyscraper, tower, for example. They also know geographical features and locations. They know how to, you know, river, mountain, and things like that. Uh, but for A2 students, of course, it's harder. But I like, and this is really interesting. Nowadays that we are working mostly online, how can you do it if you're an A2 student? 
if you not if you don't open your camera, for example, if there's no body language there, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a very good excuse for your students to open their camera to show their hands, you know, because they're actually when they're trying to describe, they do things like this, you know, they they use their hands and gestures, and this is really and since it's kind of gamified in a way because you're really trying to guess something, you can even keep a score if you want, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so how many you got right? They really want to do it. It's engaging. And then they, they feel like they can open your camera for that, right? Okay, so how about you choose another one, Antoine? <laughs> All right, let me... Yeah. So it has to be in a place. Well, uh, yeah, yes, I think I've done this. Well, there, had, there, had been, there have been many versions of this game. So there was once we did with uh, people. So I tried to guess the, the person who, who was with Mr. Trunk, but that's harder. I think you can only do that for more advanced levels, but we can do it. <laughs> we, we are more advanced. We are more Yeah. <laughs> There's some very famous ELT people in, in, in some pictures with <laughs> Mr. Trunk, actually, because of all of the conferences I've, I've uh, attended, right? I see that, yes, there, there are plenty and plenty. It's hard to pick just one. You just want to continue scrolling. Where has, <laughs> yes. Where has he been? Where has he been? <laughs> Amazing, yeah. All now, right. This, this is not an easy, uh, if you think about the materials you need as a teacher to do this game, you need a puppet who has traveled all over the world. So that's not something very easy to, to have actually. But I think I will give you, after you, you describe, I'll give you some alternatives to, to work with this, something similar, yeah. You can use Matt, you can use your tra Mr. Trunk Travels. Yep, yeah, you can use Mr. Trunk Travels is available. All right. Okay. Well, I see, I, see, I see Mr. Trunk has been, um, I think I think Mr. Trump here, uh, Mr. Mr. Trump. <laughs> that that was his first name, by the way, and we we had to change Thank for obvious re that. reasons. Yeah, <laughs> my Thanks. my students they thought that trunk, the trunk of an elephant, was actually called Trump, and that's what they called him first. But then it was 2016. Uh, we had to change it very quickly, yeah. and now it's Mr. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think even Donald is taboo nowadays. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Oh, look, Mr. Trunk. Mr. Trunk is. Uh, I think Mr. Trunk was hoping for, was hoping to be entertained, but he came a bit late. I would say, like, okay, two centuries too late, uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but right. he is at one of the most famous famous circuses in the whole world. Hmm. Okay. Just well, this one is hard. Okay. See, I don't remember all the pictures. All right. So, it's, so it's, he, yeah. It's a very old style circus, of course. They didn't use that word exactly at the time. Oh, okay. No clowns involved. Um, sure. Quite the opposite. It was, it was, it was, it was a bit of a bloody affair. Mm, okay. So that brings me back to um, Italy, possibly, right? <laughs> yes. So probably Rome. Yes. I would say in the Colosseum, right? Absolutely. Or, yes. All right. Wow. In front of. Okay. Perfect. There he is. He disappointed face. He was really hoping for a show, but no. <laughs> yes. He was too late. Yes, and I, and I'm pretty sure they did terrible things to his mates, to elephants inside that place, right? Probably. I'm. I'm, not, I'm sure tigers most definitely. Elephants maybe. I know. <laughs> Yeah, I so, really don't know that much about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really don't know much. Yeah. But, but this is, uh, again, as a circus. that's something that we can uh, also incorporate. So you can find out something about the, the location. Uh, and this is, so I've done this game in so many different ways. And I remember that one of the, the, the most, you know, like fun times we had was really there, I, I pre-selected four or five monuments and then they had to guess. And then after they had guests, they had a couple of minutes to do some research using Google or Wikipedia or whatever. 
And then they had to do a one minute talk to talk, to really describe the place and talk about the history of the place. And if they wanted to visit that place, right? And especially now with the pandemic, you know, after being uh, in their homes for months and months. And then it was fun just to be able to think, you know, to wonder, oh, I would love to visit those places and to really learn about the history. And so this is a very interesting activity that can lead to other activities as well, right? Sure. Because yeah. most of these places now do have virtual tours, but I'm also yes. thinking what you're what you're saying about the um, about digging a bit deeper, doing a bit of research, and and giving a yeah. presentation like about these different places. Um, yeah. Maybe we could even add a little creativity, creative thinking, uh, 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 critical thinking component, where basically yeah. like uh, uh, when the different groups present their more thorough research about the place. Yes. They could, they should have like five facts about it and one untrue fact. I love fact. it. Perfect. And yes. we see which groups can guess which of those facts, like no, that doesn't make sense. We need, yeah. let's not just believe them. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's find out for ourselves uh, because I think in the age of the internet, that is really very, very important. important skill. Yeah, most definitely. There's yeah. fake so news and fake yeah. Yes. Definitely. And this is really, uh, nowadays, it's part of, of uh, the core. So we have a um, kind of a, a common core that has been um, regulated here in Brazil as part of our educational policy. So we call it the common core, the standard for education. And one of the skills that we have to develop is digital literacy, but also uh, in under that umbrella of digital literacy, you have to be able to distinguish, right? Uh, you know, facts from fake news, for example. Interesting. Sorry, sorry. So it's really important for our students to know that. Yeah. Nice. They have to, to be able to, you know, so if, if they're conducting research and they have to present something, they have to, to go to reliable sources, you know, they have to ask questions like, this sounds too good to be true or, you know, and so that they can develop those skills. Government programs? Uh, I'm sorry, yes. I don't want us to talk too much politics. <laughs> I mean, I, I do know that your yeah. current president is not the most famous for. No. Um, terrible, terrible, yeah. No, but, but this it, is a. Pleasant yeah. surprise that this is yeah, coming it, from the government program, actually. Yeah, well, there was for many decades, we had um, basically a guideline of, you know, how our educational system should work and the types of, you know, the curriculum, for example, that we should see in public and private schools. But it was really uh, content driven, let's say. It was really about memorizing lots of facts and because of, of our uh, admission to college, right? The, the exam that we take, you really have a multiple choice exam that you have to remember as much as you can. But then in the last couple of years, the last decade, we've had lots of discussions coming from Congress and, you know, uh, experts. And now we have a common core. We call it the, the, the national uh, base or basis for education. And it's not so much about content anymore, but competencies, right? And skills that we have to develop in school. And one of those competencies is uh, digital literacy, uh, you know, artistic culture and things like that. So, which were not present, were, were not really a priority in Brazilian education for a very long time. So now the schools, they have to adapt to the common core, which is a good thing, you know? It's hard of course, but still we're really talking about competencies and, and collaborative work, digital literacy. Uh, we're talking about critical thinking, for example, that was not really part of our schooling I mean, it was, but it was not something top down in a way. We, we didn't really talk about it. So now we have regulation. We have legislation telling schools you have to adapt to this common core, which is good news. Yeah. It's great news, I would say. Yeah. yeah. But that is Definitely. really, um, to me, yes, education is all about basically giving, giving power back to the people. The, the, yes. the, the more the leading uh, 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 casts control information, uh, uh, the, the, yeah. yes, it, it's, it's it's really the more the more people know, the more people find out, learn how to learn, uh, exactly. learn how to think, how to check things like that. Yeah. 
the better off we'll be. Most definitely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. And before you show me your activity, I just wanted to okay. share something because, you know, I think a lot of people are probably very curious about Mr. Trunk's adventures. And I just wanted to show some of the places he's been to, you know, so you can see here uh, some, some of the pictures. Uh, many of the pictures were taken in conferences I attended it, uh, in 2019 when I was finishing my master's uh, at the University of Bristol. So, you know, he's been to Poland, he's been to, see, <laughs> Poland. Dansk. Yes, such a beautiful, that's where I met Christopher, by the way, right? Oh, and, nice. and then he's, oh, take a look. He's also a geek with some superheroes here. Huh? He loves Star Wars. May the fourth be with you, right? And he's been to Hungary. He's been to, so this was in Montenegro, I think. Yes, this is Montenegro. Uh, this, this was Bristol when it snowed. This is Switzerland. This is Zurich. <laughs> this is uh, Paris, right? Jane Austen, take a look at that. That was in Bath near uh, Bristol. So the Roman baths here, beautiful place. This is the, the bridge, the um, suspension bridge in Bristol where I lived for one year. He became such a huge fan of UK, the, the British culture. <laughs> he really embraced the British culture. <laughs> so he had tea at five. <laughs> well, actually they don't do that, right? Uh, and he has his friend Klingon Bonzinho, we call it. Uh, so take a look. He's also a fan of Star Trek. <laughs> so yeah, Mr. Trunk has been all over. And I feel like this is <laughs> such a rich source of, 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 you know, everything really that you can do. You can describe the pictures. You can. So I remember using Mr. Trunk's pictures to talk about the past mm -hmm. or to introduce uh, Present Perfect. So where has Mr. Trunk been, right? For example, we also talked about future plans for uh, because my students, when I was teaching face-to-face, -face, my students had to decide or to talk, who's going to take Mr. Trunk home now? And what are the future plans? So I was introducing, you know, uh, future with uh, going to, or even will, or different, uh, you know, ways to talk about the future. And it was fun. It was really fun because they created the materials, you know, they were the ones who, who took Mr. Trunk home, who took pictures of Mr. Trunk with their family. So there are many pictures of Mr. Trunk with their dogs. And uh, there was a picture of Mr. Trunk riding a, a Harley Davidson with, with somebody's dad, <laughs> which was really nice because I had no idea they were into motorcycles, right? And then I started learning more about my, my students, like their routines and the things that they liked just because of this one, you know, stuffed elephant that kind of, you know, it just blew out of proportion, really. We, we were just using Mr. Trunk in a very localized way. Like, you know, it was really, you know, take him home, take him back. And one of my, my students said, teacher, here in Brazil, they call us teacher, right? They don't call uh -huh. us Mr. Uh -huh. What? They said, teacher, can I take Mr. Trunk to Paraguay? I said, what? Paraguay? Yes. I'm going to spend a few days in Paraguay. And then Argentina said, please, yes, do. So he went to Paraguay, Argentina. Then I went to the United States for a, for a couple of weeks. I took him there. Then I took him to Mexico. And then I came back. My student took him to um, Iceland, mm -hmm. <laughs> Norway, Denmark, and Germany. And then uh, my other student took him to the US again, but he went to Las Vegas, for example. Huh? And to Los Angeles, <laughs> and then he came back, and then he went to Portugal with my wife, and then I took him to Spain, and then he went to many countries there in the East, you know, uh, Eastern Europe. So yeah, and here we are. We're so we have lots of pictures. <laughs> yes, and really, I think this is um, my advice to those of you who don't have Mr. Trunk. You can use Mr. Trunk's pictures, but I really think you can do something that belongs to your group you know it's something mm -hmm. that is yours it's a token it's something that it doesn't have to be a stuffed elephant it could be anything really it but in a way that your students interact with that that it becomes part of their their routine of their lives 
and they can bring it back to the classroom to share. And nowadays with remote teaching, it's more complicated, but we can, use, we can even use the post office, for example, to send stuff around. Uh, if you are in Europe, I think it's quite easy for you to get people who are traveling to actually take pictures of, of this thing that you have so you can start building your, your repertoire, let's say, you know? It's really fun, it works really well. Well, it would definitely be a, a, a great argument for bringing uh, conferences in person back. Uh, <laughs> definitely. But I think, I think next in person conference, Andre, you might find like a lot of teachers, each with their own like little stuffed animal. <laughs> And that would be nice. Them and every conference, teachers exchange their 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 stuffed yes. animals, and within a few years, like we'll have a bunch of Mr. Trunk cousins. Yeah, uh, that would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it and then I could I could take some I could take your stuffed exactly. animal back to Brazil, spend some time here, send you, uh, and then when we meet again, another conference there, and then I'll give you your stuffed animal. You know with a little more experience, more, you know, seasoned a little bit <laughs> so that you can use him to do something with your groups, you know? Yeah. I was wondering, did, did you get the idea from, because uh, it really reminds me of that, um, it was a, a French movie, uh, Amélie Poulain. Uh, Amélie Poulain, yes. Right. Uh, the, 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 it was a, an elf Garden or? No. It was a garden. Oh, it was a gnome. gnome. Yes, it, it was a garden gnome. Yes, Her that traveled all over. Lost uh, the taste for life after his wife had passed away. Yes, and uh, at one point she she grew tired of trying to convince him to get out of the house, so yep. she stole his garden gnome. That's and started it. And sending him postcards of the garden gnome <laughs> in various places around the world. I remember that. Yes. Was just like, what? what is going on? And by the I, end of the movie, yeah. he just left home he said, okay i need to move on i need to embrace life again yeah Off I that's go. such a great movie i may have been influenced uh at a subconscious level let's say because i remember watching that movie i love the movie and you know i found out that there is a there's a platform i love uh working with projects you know project-based learning and everything so there's a platform called iron it's international education and resource network iron and there are, I think, 100 ongoing projects with, you know, students from all over the world. And there uh -huh. is the traveling or the teddy bear project or something like that. I think it's the teddy bear project. So they have a teddy bear and there are others that are very similar. So they have a, a doll or something and they send to different countries and it spends a whole semester with students in, in, in a particular region at a school. And they have like a travel uh, diary, like a journal that they they put some entries. Like today, this uh, doll did this, and it it liked, it didn't like. And then they send the doll or the the teddy bear back to the countries, and then other countries. And then by the end of the year, maybe this doll will have visited like what three, four countries or something like that, different schools. And then they can learn from the entries in the journal and, and everything is written in English, right? And I only found out that, I found, uh, I found out about that probably as six months or maybe eight months after I had started with Mr. Trunk. So I was thinking, you know, my, my idea is definitely not original. <laughs> People have been doing this for a very long time, but I'm glad I was actually able to, to think of it, you know, so maybe because of the influences I had, and uh, there are ongoing projects like that. And, and like, you know, think about summer camps or, you know, that we were, were, so you can actually bring this elephant, this stuffed animal to be part of, of that routine that you're actually meeting a lot of different people. And depending on the type of camp, if you have international guests, you know, people who come from different countries, you could definitely send him away with one of your friends so that it gets, and this is very fun. How will it get back home? So you have to think, you have to actually keep track of where it is, you know, make sure that they send to somebody else who's going to send to somebody else. So it, make, it makes it way, it, its way home back to mm -hmm. you, right? So otherwise uh, you will lose your friend, you know? So it's really interesting the, the things you can do with it.
Well, social networks are supposed to bring us together, the internet and everything. Yep. And uh, that's a real way of doing that. Uh, Most definitely, yeah. What I liked as well in some of the pictures is that it's not always just about the place. You can have different themes. Uh, it can yep. also be about like local customs, traditions. I mean, yes. if, if you sent Mr. Trunk here, uh, uh, St. Petersburg, of course, I could take a photo of him uh, at the Hermitage, uh, um, yep. the Marinsky Theater, but I could yep. also take Mr. Trunk to the Banya, for example. It's, it's the <laughs> yes. local sauna. Uh, uh, to the uh, shashlik, it's it's the Russian yep. style uh, barbecue, for example. Yes, it's it's delicious, by the way. I've had some. Yes, you been here? I didn't know. No, I haven't been there, but some Russian friends here in Brazil, so they they actually did it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but so you there is one um, situation that you know. So this is not for people below eighteen, but let's say. Some of my adults, uh, my adult groups, they took Mr. Trunk to Tequila in Mexico, the city where they make tequila. I was there as well. I, I went to uh, Guadalajara for a conference. And then uh, you have a picture of Mr. Trunk wearing a sombrero with two shots of tequila. <laughs> so it was really about, and, and that's the only thing that, that gives you away where he is, right? So, so it's really about the, the tradition, the, the okay. ritual, let's say. So it's a sombrero, and then he has a bottle of tequila and two shot glasses. <laughs> and, uh, and it's fun because it's really part of, of the local tradition. And there are some pictures of Mr. Trunk with blue agave, you know, the, pic the, the plant that they use to make tequila. And this is really, and, and, and some pictures they were taken here in Brazil, like with Klingon. And uh, there was a maker space with some Star Wars uh, props, you know like R2, D2, and, and there was a um, sort of like a, a green screen, right? So that they could actually change the background. And this is something that really, I love the, the idea because my students can do that now and they can even use those as filters, you know? So like they take a picture of Mr. Trunk somewhere or they get one of the pictures and they use a filter, like a, a, a zoom filter to show the background, right? Yeah. It's really, it's something that we can do. It's, 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 it's funny. It's, it's actually quite fun for the I students. To to describing that, I, I noticed one, yes, that was like that with different kind of, I don't know, I don't know who they are. Yeah. But that <laughs> that, yeah, that was a, a conference, I think in Brazil. And, and normally, so I'm, I'm, when I do my talks, right? So I deliver a talk. And I normally take Mr. Trunk with me just to get started, like an icebreaker or something like that. And then I shy, then I ask people to follow Mr. Trunk and take more pictures to increase my repertoire, you know, so that students can benefit. And they have fun. They just, you know, as I'm talking, they're just passing Mr. Trunk around and taking funny pictures using different filters. And it's really fun. Yeah. I miss that, by the way. You know, I hope we can we can do that again really soon. Yeah. We're all hoping for that. Yes. <laughs> but it's really nice. I really, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I think there, this is uh, one of those very simple activities that you can uh, plan as long as you really, so the idea here is, is not just to dwell on the digital world. You know, it's like we are, of course, we're doing a lot of remote teaching and we're looking for uh, tools to help our students do many things like Padlet, Jamboard, and all of that. But then we are kind of losing touch with the real things, you know, mm -hmm. the, the real world. And I feel like it's totally fine for you to tell your students to do something in, in their houses, for example, or to go outside and take a picture or to shoot a, a very short video or something like that. And I feel like Mr. Trunk is, is that. And there was a picture that I took with some teachers. I was doing a training session. And then I talked about Mr. Trunk. And then one of them had um, a doll, like Frida Kahlo, you know? So she brought Frida. And then we had Mr. Trunk. And then uh, Winnie the Pooh, you know, like a tigger. And so, they, so we had all of those very funny stuffed animals and, and uh, characters. And then we took a, a screenshot. We took a picture. And it's us, you know, teachers, grown-up people having fun with stuffed animals. 
it's it, it's nice you know it's really something that it's memorable you have lots to talk about and this is certainly something that will get your students more engaged and probably more willing to speak more right because they want sure. to be part of that yeah for sure definitely yeah okay love it so everybody's encouraged to either use mr trunk on instagram yes. trunk travels or actually start developing your own uh, yep. so that basically we have even more yeah i honestly i think we should probably start a hashtag to unite us, you know, like everybody who's doing that. Maybe we can start a hashtag. Uh, well, we, we have Mr. Trunk Travels. I can go back to all of the pictures and add another hashtag, but maybe we can think of something. How about, you know, our listeners? Why don't you tell us what hashtag we can use and what prop you're going to use? Is it, is it a stuffed elephant or stuffed animal or a doll? Or, a, or I have a brain, so maybe I can, uh, you know, a traveling brain. brain. <laughs> a traveling brain i don't know so you take a picture of a brain in different uh, places uh, the, the, uh, nice. uh, maybe it's just my association from futurama but i i, I see that brain is <laughs> traveling around the world and just like sucking yeah. knowledge out of humanity <laughs> yeah <laughs> every time i say i have a brain people go like yeah of course you have a brain everybody has a brain right but this this is actually a rubber <laughs> brain that uh -huh. I use for my classes. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Nice. Great. Well, I have a little activity in store for you as well. Nice. We're really going to, it's it's going to be very, very different. Uh, okay. It's still very adapted for all these ideas of summer camps, things like that. Um, yep. I was thinking of an activity, especially because it's kind of our first live stream. It, we've had a panel discussion, but it's our first live stream together. So Definitely, I thought, yeah. well, we're a bit like learners in a classroom, like learning to work together as well. And uh, I thought let's focus on activity that, that is good for language development, of course, but also for yep. collaboration. Okay, so nice. This little activity is simply called uh, Art Commission. Okay. Nice. And it's a lot of fun. All you need is a bit of paper and a pen or a pencil with you. Okay. I think I, I have. Well, let me get uh, here. I have. Oh, I didn't think of warning you of that. Okay. True. No, I do have a pen here. And I certainly have, I have a notebook, Perfect. lots of paper. So yeah, there you go. Okay. I, I do not expect you to be as good as Pablo Picasso or Dali or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, well, I'll, called, I'll, I'll do my best. It is called Art Commission because in terms okay. what we do is one of us plays the role of... So uh, uh, like many, many years ago, uh, for example, first I'll be an art patron and I have this vision of uh, a piece of art that I'd like you to create, the artist. Oh, okay. But you cannot see my vision. So I have to describe what I'd like you to design uh -huh. and you're right. going to listen to me and draw what you hear me describe and then you're oh, going to show okay. me and we're going to compare with the original uh <laughs> learners that should be fun. fun with that yeah. yeah it's very good for descriptive language definitely uh, and it's a great icebreaker really because students develop this yeah, this this fun collaborative uh uh um spirit together Perfect. So, so Mr. Let's Artist, are you ready? I you ready? am. I'm definitely ready. Okay. Okay. Bring well, it on. <laughs> you know, I, I really want to. Okay, let's start with this one. I, I have this vision of uh, okay. a, a really beautiful drawing. Um, I'm going to call it the singing bird. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to draw is just the head of a bird. No body okay. needed. Uh, the head of a bird now, it's, it's, it's in three quarters, facing three quarters towards us. The beak is open, the eyes are closed, and there are kind of like three musical notes coming out of the beak of the bird. Okay. Okay. 
Well, this doesn't look nice. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Students laugh and laugh at each other's drawings. It's loads of fun. <laughs> Just okay. Uh, the beak open, eyes closed, and like three musical notes coming out of its beak. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> All right. Can right. I show, show you? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me show you the original. Yeah, I'm sure it's much worse than mine. <laughs> well, not, not Very too close. Bad. Yeah. Not too Very bad. Close. I, I, think, I think you win the contract. <laughs> okay, great. Loved it. <laughs> you can do that. So you can do that in groups, actually, where mm -hmm. like different students do their own drawing. So you have yep. one art patron and a few artists. And okay. then they discuss which one's the closest. Perfect. I love that. So they can use even comparative language, right? Yeah. Exactly. And Great. again, about collaboration, uh, uh, um, you know, developing ties amongst the group. What I like yes. is that I personally, I'm sure you are as well, very positive person. So through yep. example, students mostly uh, uh, want to compliment each other and they do need to pick one. But they do sure. it very diplomatically. So if yes. there was another one, uh, uh, if I wanted to award you uh, the contract, I would say, look, um, sorry, I don't know, Jack. Um, yep. Sorry, Jack. I mean, I, I love your little bird. It's, 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 it's really beautiful. It's not exactly what I envisioned. I, I believe Andre's uh -huh. is closest to my nice. own. But And you're teaching you know, them how to give feedback as well, right? Think about it. Yeah. So we have a, a bunch of little drawings like that. It's lots yeah. of fun. Okay, so are you going to describe another one? You want to try a second <laughs> one? Yeah, let's see if I can do it better. Huh? Okay, this one's this one's a bit challenging. Okay, I like yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, look, Andre, th this is a piece of work for me because I I, I am a teacher as well. Apparently, I'm a yeah. billionaire teacher, art patron teacher. <laughs> Okay. Um, and I, I see this, I have this vision for uh, uh, a beautiful drawing called the hardworking. Yeah. Now there's no need to draw an actual student. What I is um, an open yeah. textbook. Okay. And on, so it's, it's open approximately in the middle. And so you yeah. have a page open on the right, a page open. Now, both pages have kind of like just lines at the top and at the bottom to represent uh, uh, um, text. But in okay. the middle, they both have a diagram. This is a maths textbook. Okay. In the middle of the left page, there's a little triangle. Yep. Yeah. Um, and on each of the angles, you have the letters A, B, and C. Okay. And at the center of the page on the right, there's kind of a graph. So you're just going to draw uh, uh, the uh, uh, Y axis, okay. but not the X axis, just the All right. axis. And then <clears throat> a line that goes up and down. All right. Okay. That's it? That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> All right. I, th I think I, I got ahead of myself and I did draw the X axis because, you know, when you said graph, but uh -huh. <laughs> let's see. If you... <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> Are you the original. Let's take a look. It, it's, it's, this one's a bit <laughs> more challenging, honestly. Let's face it. I think so. Oh, but okay. Yeah. Very close. Well, not too bad, right? Not too shabby. <laughs> Absolutely. Very close. Right. Nice, nice. I love it. Yeah, great. Well, when I you said that. you have to be like Picasso, I was thinking, oh my gosh, he's going <laughs> to describe very famous works of art. <laughs> and that's <laughs> going to be terrible. <laughs> Even worse, like Dali, you know, the, the melting oh, clock. The everything. melting clock, yes. Yeah, that would be tough, yeah.
No, the no. funny thing is that we we probably have a memory of of seeing that, right? Like everybody has seen it, so we could probably try to get close, but I don't think so. Yeah, it's too complicated. Yeah. At the same time, it's a matter of generations. I, I don't know if 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 we're talking about school kids, teenagers. Yeah, um, yeah they don't. I don't know. Maybe they haven't seen it. Yeah. Which is which is kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, they have to to know about. Art I almost and cried one day when a te teenager just looked at me when I said the Beatles and looked at me like, <gasps> they uh, don't know the Beatles. I know. Yeah. No, yeah. No. I remember, I remember uh, Freddie Mercury, you know, I was actually teaching two, three years ago. And uh, I remember that, you know, I like to play the guitar and I like rock music. I'm a huge fan of the Beatles and, <laughs> and rock in general. And there was, uh, I think it was, the movie was coming out, right? It came out last year or two years ago. Bohemian oh, Rhapsody, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, I said, well, let's watch a preview so we can talk about, uh, do you like movies that uh, depict the, the life of, you know, famous people, bands and whatever? And then they said, yeah, we, we started brainstorming. And then I showed uh, a picture of Bohemian Rhapsody and the Egyptian actor, the American Egyptian actor that I forgot his name, Malek, Malik? Malik? Remy, Remy Malek or something like that. Like that. Yeah, Remy, yeah. He even won and, an Oscar you know, for the role. Great, he did a great, yeah, he, he won an Oscar for that role, right? He did, best acting, best actor, yeah. And then I showed a snippet of the preview with a guy, you know, and then my students were like, oh, my God, who the heck is this guy? You know, which band is it? And then I said, now you're going to know. And then they were singing Bohemian Rhapsody, right? And they, well, it doesn't ring a bell. I said, oh, my God, you don't know? Uh, and then I said, okay, let's, uh, let's play Hangman or something. And then he tried to guess the name of the band, right? And then they started with A. No, there's no A. And then somebody said E. Okay, double E. Okay. And then I wrote Queen and they said like, yeah, we still don't know. <laughs> I said, you don't know Queen. Oh my God. It is something, <laughs> I think it's generational, I guess, right? I see why you picked the song Bohemian Rhapsody, but I, I yeah. think it would have been easier. Um, I would have gone We're with- the champions. Or We Will Rock You. <laughs> or We Will Rock You, right? Yeah. Because those, those two true. songs are very popular for uh, any kind of sporting yes. event. Um, That's true, that's true. But I think Maybe they would have recognized the song, but they, they would still not know the name of the band, right? And then again, I said, oh my gosh, we have to teach you about those bands. They were awesome bands, you know? So they, they changed the industry. <laughs> yeah. I know. Andre, are you, are you feeling a little old as well? <laughs> well, I was waiting for somebody to say it, but yes. <laughs> I am. I am. It, yeah, it, it's it's part of life, right? I, uh, it, absolutely. Yeah, I did some. I remember bringing uh, the guitar for some classes. I like brain breaks, you know. I like okay, so we're gonna work for fifteen minutes, and then we we'll take a two three minute break, and then sometimes I play the guitar, I play a song, and I remember the first time I felt really old was when a bunch of teenagers asked me to play a lot of songs I had never heard of in my life because they were very modern, very recent. So I had no idea what they were talking about. But, and then I had to, at the time, you know, like, I don't know, seven years ago, where I had to, to learn uh, Taylor Swift and uh, One Direction. <laughs> and then, you know, Ed Sheeran uh, mm -hmm. started becoming more and more famous. I said, well, he has some great songs, okay. And then I started learning a few, but still, I didn't know most of them. Yeah. No, to and me, then I realized. Well, oh. my first reflex thinking of modern music, I would still say uh, say names like Britney Spears and Enrique Iglesias, and you just look at me like Antoine, that's two years ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Say so, yeah, that that was the pop culture for us at the time. So you know, because we're really thinking about early. 2000s i think when we think about modern music right exactly <laughs> that's my reference everything yeah. from 2000 is modern music <laughs> yes i know i know well it's life right c'est la vie oh yeah i absolutely don't don't mind and it, it's it's again um 
I know that there are like some some intergenerational insults, like uh, uh, okay boomer or something like that. I heard after a while. Yeah. But that that I, that doesn't speak to me. I, I really think that it's important that generations uh, uh, share, work together. I mean, that's really part Definitely. of our job. Yeah. And think of of how uh, many incredible and creative solutions we can come up with. You know, you have the experience and the knowledge of people who come from uh, older generations, right? And you do have a lot of creativity with new generations. And if you can join those things, you have absolutely, you have really, you can have incredible things, incredible solutions. And, and uh, one example of this really was a couple of years ago, two years ago, I remember that we had a program here in Brazil for around 300 public school school, uh, students who were awarded, like like they got a scholarship to spend a month in the United States, right? So it was really a, a, a huge project. It was a governmental project. And we were supposed to teach them. We were supposed to develop an immersion program for them to prepare to go to the United States and develop their competencies, right? And I remember that we got uh, an older teacher who was an incredible storyteller, you know? And and like the kind of person you want to listen to that. He just put them there in front of of the classroom. And then he doesn't have books from memory, like everything. And he just kept telling stories like that. And then, you know, those kids were, well, they were teenagers, like 15, 16, 17 year old teenagers. They were fascinated, you know, they really love the stories. And again, it's something that maybe it doesn't come so naturally to us, right? Like just, okay, I'll tell you a story Uh, because we feel like we have to use digital technologies with those kids and, you know, the power of storytelling, for example. It's amazing. Absolutely. You don't need anything else. You just need somebody to tell you the story. Yeah. As you said, with your guitar, same thing. Yep. And same what, thing. I, what I really liked uh, 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 as well about you mentioning the guitar is I think that's something that's uh, um, key for us teachers to remember. Um, to remember to vary in energy levels that, that, that students yes. spend during the classroom. Um, sometimes yeah. curriculums are a bit heavy and teachers are forced to teach this and that and, and it becomes a bit heavy and students, students just completely yeah. zone out at times of lessons if we don't have these little times of the lessons where, you know what, not yeah. that much energy is required of the student. Definitely. But they're Most still definitely. communicating and they're still learning. That's why I, I remember uh, my trip to the U.S. in 2016 uh, was part of a program also. And then they had we had a, a guest teacher, like a visiting teacher from the state of Wyoming in the, the U.S. They have more wild animals than people, uh, you know, like five. They have like, I don't know the population now, but they have this huge uh, herd. I, I don't even know the collective of bisons. I have no idea. A herd of bisons? I don't know. But anyway, I guess I know. probably. But so they have more bisons than people really uh, in the whole state. Yeah. Something like that. And I remember that beautiful. It's, it's close to the, the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Beautiful, beautiful state. And they sent a teacher to, to actually spend a couple of weeks here in Brazil teaching us, you know, different strategies and everything. And then I went there to spend a few weeks there as well. And she was the first person who introduced me to the idea of brain breaks, Uh brain breaks. And that changed my life as a teacher because I remember, and now I I understand why after studying psychology and neuroscience, we we get, if, if there's too much information being thrown at us, you know, all the time, we experience something that cognitive psychologists call cognitive overload, right? Yes. Because we have a working memory system that gets full very quickly, depending on what you're doing, right? So one of the ways to avoid that and to actually work around that is to have a break. Just like a simple, it's like going to, to the gym to work out, you know? In between the series, you have to have a break. Otherwise, you get injured. And... It's such a simple idea. I started implementing uh, brain breaks. 
And that completely changed things that happened in the classroom because a lot of the kids, especially kids who would start to misbehave, they could better control themselves now yes. because they got the, 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 the release, that energy release that maybe I played loud music for two minutes or three minutes, or maybe I asked them to stand up and walk around and jump or do something more physical, or we had a ball or, you know, anything really. And it changed how, and, and, and again, uh, that goes against a lot of what teachers believe in here in Brazil. We have to cover the syllabus and the content and the page of the book. And, but like you said, you know, we're trying to make things more automatic in our students' brains. And we know that if we just do it, you know, if we rehearse or repeat those things there in that lesson, that's not going to cut it. We have to do it more times over a longer period, right? So maybe you can just touch upon those things, you know, do some drilling or do something quick. And then you say, you know what? Come back to this tomorrow, three days after, a week after, yeah. at the end of the month, a spaced repetition. And that's much better than if you just try to, to repeat as many times as possible here. It doesn't work as much. So we're going to use that extra time for brain breaks. And brain breaks can be fun. They can be physical. And I think that helps a lot. That's something we have to teach teachers out there. They have to start using stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, it still makes the learning, it might, it might seem over the course of the lesson that the learning is less effective because we're yeah. wasting time. But yes. over the curriculum, over the course, over the month, the learning yeah. is more effective. Exactly. Because of the results. Yep. And, and, and you basically described what there is a, a psychologist from UCLA, I think, Dr. Robert Bjork. And he talks about the difference between performance and learning, right? Because if you, if you cram, if you study a lot, you know, a lot for a, a very short period, let's say one day before the test, for example, you can actually ace the test because oh, you yeah. still remember a lot of those things. But apply the same test three days after, for example, the exact same test, really, or a week after. And you will get maybe 50% of what you got before because you forgot all of those things, you know. And, but if you do it in, in a way that you space out learning and you retrieve things, you know, you have instead of um, showing your students the answers or let's revise this. So last class, we talked about this and this. Do something like this. What did we talk about last class? Can you remember? Jot down a few key keywords or you know, get a post-it and write down everything you can remember about last class. And then you compare uh, with a friend and then you check your notes and mm -hmm. see what you missed, for example. So that's a very effective strategy we can use. But normally we don't know those things, right? We just, I think we're really replicating what our teachers did to us and their teachers did to them, <laughs> you know? So we're kind of doing the same old, same old, right? Over that, and over that's again. Kind of where the curriculums come from, usually. Yeah. Like it, it takes exactly. time to go up the hierarchy of uh, uh, usually centralized education, and yeah. it's a slow-moving affair. But it is moving. Most definitely. And that's also coming back to what you said. Uh, I'm really looking forward to conferences being back, uh, um, not yes. just online because things are moving, and it's really uplifting and really motivating uh, to be at those conferences with like-minded professionals and to see that, hey, there is an active world of education out there. Oh, most definitely. So this is what we like. The brain loves connecting. That's what the brain does, you know? This is really the, the underlying foundation of how we learn, how, you know, neurons connect with one another and how people connect. And, that, and I think this is something that so we take for granted sometimes, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really important. It's something that it's, it's essential for life, for learning. And we have stopped connecting physically now because of the pandemic. And I think everybody's really eager to just go back to conferences and meetings and parties. And, uh, and now I think we're, we're coming closer and, and closer to, to that. I, I, you know, oh. we still have a couple of months to go, I guess, but, uh, the UK, England now, you don't even have to wear masks in, in, in some places, right? In, in the US as well. 
I'm really looking forward to, you know, traveling back to Europe and meeting people and then going out after the conference and talking about projects and things like that. That's well, what drives yeah. me. Yeah, we will do that when, when, when the time comes, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. All right, Andre, talking about cognitive overload, it, it's, yep. it's been more than an hour and I think... <laughs> I think we have overloaded. We, we need a brain break <laughs> as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, Andre, yes. awesome having you. And we will meet in person at conferences, as we said. You mentioned parties, things like that. Um, yeah. But even if it takes a while for that to come back alive, I'm sure we'll do more things uh, uh, online together. Most definitely. It was a pleasure having you on the channel. Well, my pleasure, Antoine, and, and really, uh, it was really great to, I know a lot of people are going to watch this later on, and, you know, leave your feedback, comments, ask questions, follow us on social media, we're trying to share good practices, right, and we would love, again, the idea is connect, we want to connect with you, right, so yeah, as long as you, as you'll have me, I'll come back, if you'll have yes. me again, I'll come back, yes, <laughs> yeah. All right, Andre, Perfect. it was a great, great stream with you. Everybody, Wonderful. do your homework. If you're looking for a good read at the moment, the, the Learning Cosmos is right there on uh, uh, Andre's Facebook page. So check that yep. out. And I, I hope Wonderful. to have you again soon. Yes, looking forward to it. Thank you very right. much. Yeah, Andre, have a great day in Brazil. You have a great day in Russia. And... We'll talk again soon, okay? Bye-bye. Time already. It's about 18 degrees now Celsius, so it's getting warmer, yeah.